Hi, I'm Gary Aiken with Kessler Soils Engineering Products. And today we're doing a training video to show you how to remove the testing derrick from your beam in case you need to ship it uh, in its um, crate or separately to get the weight down. The total weight of the device is about 137 pounds, give or take a pound on that. So what I'm going to do is show you how to take this off, how the disconnections you've got to do includes the power wiring as well as the mechanical connections for the rollers and to, um, to do that. So what you need, what I recommend is getting a, uh, a mover's blanket or a pad, something to um, soften and keep the uh, sapper from getting scratched while you're doing this. And I'll proceed to uh, show you the details of how to disconnect the electrical and mechanical in the, in the next frame. This is where the electrical is connected. This is where the one side you have bearings, the roller bearings on each side of the beam that travel up and along the beam. And also your control wiring connection is the yellow cable. So we're going to disconnect those. But first, you want to make sure that your power is off before you start uh, disconnecting the, the wires. The other thing that we should uh, uh, be reminded to do is to have the sapper in the tra uh, trailer hitch mount for stability that will keep it from accidentally falling over while you're performing these operations. And the, the other item that you will be ready to do is be able to catch this when those rollers start coming off on that. All right, and the, and the gearing on this. So you want to be able to ha have it set up just like this, connected, you, your bottom safety pin in, the uh, handles in the uh, hook, and to be ready to start the disassembly. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the control cable. You turn the silver uh, screw threads out, and then once you get them out, you pull it out just like that. Then for the power, it's a quick disconnect right here. That disconnects the power from the sapper unit. But you also have two Allen wrench screws here that you need to remove in order to remove the uh, power chain off of the sapper unit itself. So we're going to do that. So what you want to use is your Allen wrench from your tool kit and um, to undo those. And then to make sure you don't lose them, you're going to you're going to screw them back into the uh, once you get the power chain loose you're going to screw them back into the cover of the of the sapper So you pull that off, pull your two screws out, there's one of them, and then the other one you want to remove, and then what you can do with this chain is you can just let it sit there, but you want to put these screws back in here so you don't lose them. And that's Lucky in the background you hear barking. He's our mascot, the golden retriever. Okay, so we have uh, removed the power and the control cable wiring. I moved them out of the way so you can get a better view. We're going to use our 7 16th uh, wrench. No, I'm sorry, 5 16th wrench to remove these things. But when you when you start this operation, you want to you want to sort of Put your shoulder against the uh, casing of the sapper, the derrick, te the testing uh, derrick, and uh, so because it's going to lean out on you when you uh, um, do that. So I'm going to I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see how how I am uh, undoing these uh, rollers. 
So again, shoulder in, and then you just want to loosen them, on, loosen them all up. They have uh, two hex head bolts in each one. And the other thing that you got to be prepared, you can just let them drop on the ground, is you have these plastic sliders that keep it aligned on the beam. They're going to fall out. It's not a big deal. We're, we'll uh, put those in a plastic bag in the tool kit for if you're getting your new sapper to assemble. But you'll have to go through the reverse steps assembling those. So those are loose. I'm going to go to the other side and loosen those. The reason you want the sapper on the bottom and with the hammer locked in the locked position is that it will rest on the anvil on the foot um, when these come off. So you're, you don't have to carry the weight, you just have to keep this from falling away from the beam when these come loose. So once you get them loose, then you can go to the ball side of your hex head wrenches, move the power cable out of the way. really go to town on them like that and then this one you can just spin they should come out loose they should not uh, be binding or difficult to pull out and uh, there's one you want to we're going to screw these back into our mountings after we take the bearings off so there's the other one you can go ahead and grab that plastic slider. Slide that off. And at this point, you can probably, it'll, it can twist off of it, but you want to keep going on the other side. And again, the, these hex head screws, the 5 16th inch diameter ones, um, come off, should uh, screw out easily and uh, and when you put it together the same thing when you're putting putting them back on When you're operating your device for a lot of tests you want to check these uh, probably at the beginning of every day if you're doing uh, I don't know 20 to 30 tests a day you want to check these bolts before you start each morning to make sure they haven't loosened up from the vibration all right at this point all of the rollers are off the sapper is free from the beam and what you're going to see is I'm going to pull it toward me a little bit it's on the the only thing that's really it's attached to right now is the gears the gears that caught that go in the the teeth of the gears in the beam itself so sometimes you have to give it a little lift up uh, sometimes you got to unlock the hammer to free up to free up the uh, Sometimes then you can unlock, you, if it's no power, unlocking the hammer is not going to hurt anything. It's really for transport to keep the hammer from bouncing around. But if you have power to it, when that anvil goes up into the body of the sapper, it will activate, and you're doing a test, you've started a test, it will activate lifting and dropping the hammer. And it's quite jarring when you don't have a drive rod and you're in the ground, sticking in the ground. 
Okay, so at this point, you can grab, there's a little ledge at the bottom, you can grab the Derrick test right there, pull it out, and then you wanna lay it on its side on the blanket in a rest position so you're safe. And then you're ready to put this back in the box. What I would recommend, I would recommend that you do lock a hammer though. And to do that, you gotta make sure the hammer's at the bottom though, to lock it in place, which it is now. Okay. 